Well, hi and uh, hi and good morning. From a, it's a beautiful, beautiful day here, just outside of Toronto, <clears throat> and a uh, hey, good time to be starting another radio. So this is a Northern Electric radio. Looking it over for the first time with any detail. There's a magic eye here. Ooh, some very stiff wires going to it. So maybe we'll just leave it right there. And uh, it's a, a AM and shortwave radio. Shortwave from 6 to 15 uh, megahertz. And it's had some work done to it, of course. Most, most radios of this vintage have been in somebody's uh, shop. I'm sure that says gook there, I don't know. <laughs> a couple of wires sticking out. Hey, one's got a big A on it. Must be the antenna on the ground. Let's take a look here. Tube uh, locations. This is a... Uh, looks like a 83, 832A. I think is what that says. 832A has a fuse here. Um, hmm, that's kind of odd. Kind of doubtful that's original. Let's see, everything else looks fairly original. A nice big transformer on it. Let's see what else we can see here. Four controls. So that's tuning. It seems to stick right here. Already? What? Well, okay, we're off to a good start. Radio doesn't seem to tune. Wow, that's a real solid knock there, right at the end. Uh oh. Huh. That's mysterious. Okay. Got the uh, on, off, probably volume. <clears throat> this must be the band selector. Oh, look at that. So it's putting some kind of mask behind the uh, uh, title, uh, band title that's not working. Yeah, and there's a light back here. Shine a little light through those. Let's see. This is probably tone here. And, uh, oh, look at that. 2007. So this guy was fixed up, I guess, in 2007. Yeah, it's very nice that the guy put a, uh, put a date on this, but this is pretty old looking. I, you know what? It matches another one back here. This, this fits the bracket and everything. So I wonder if this has come from another another radio, older radio. Okay, and the magic eye that also has a date on it. On this tag here. 2007, very... I'm going to guess it says good there tape on the end, which is a little, a little unusual to do. Okay, let's take a look underneath here. Where it says good here, this is a tuning uh, adjustment of some sort. Good or... I don't know what that says. Penciled in. OK, 
Okay, so we've got uh, a few replaced parts. Uh, electrolytic capacitor here, capacitor here. Uh, this resistor looks replaced. Uh, but it's got lots of older parts in it. Uh, paper wax capacitor here, 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 and here. That's four, five. Got an electrolytic down here. Uh, I don't have this, I don't have the speaker in my shop, but it's I have it. Here's one of those batteries, um, but a uh, bias battery here. I wonder if there's more. This time the battery is still included in the holder. Um, Lots of old resistors here. Body and dot type. Some unusual component here. I think it's a capacitor says Carolab on it. Let's take a little closer look in here. Adjust the focus so we're not quite so close. About like that. See a molded capacitor jumping right out at me here. Uh, one of the comments I got in my previous video was that these molded capacitors uh, have an internal problem where the, the plastic or some component of the capacitor construction uh, forms uh, acid uh, inside the capacitor. Of course, uh, acid is extremely conductive stuff. Um, they make them uh, appear leaky. I haven't, haven't confirmed that, but it's an interesting idea. So here's the coils with trimmers on them. And that's probably an antenna coil right here. Probably, yeah, the antenna's hooked right. Is it hooked? No? Yes, I think it is hooked right, right to it. on-off switch there, uh, with I'm pretty sure the original wire attached to it. Comes down here. Goes to this, oh, a block. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm not sure what this black thing is, but it could contain uh, a couple capacitors or something like that. Not sure what that is. There's, here's the fuse. You can see that the fuse is a uh, not original. There's the wires, modern type wire, same wire that's on the power cord, which has been replaced. There's a plug for the speakers, speaker, one speaker, and the new resistor there. Well, there's the electrolytic capacitor sitting there. Hmm. That's one of the new components that's been put in. The uh, orange drop capacitor. So not a lot done here, not a lot, not an awful lot done on this radio. And there's that uh, battery, this, this piece right here. So there we go, a mostly original radio. It's had some work done, it's very selective work done.
I think a really good idea here would be to uh, plug in the speaker and see what happens. Okay, so here's the uh, speaker. It's in good shape. There's no cracking around the outside here of the cone. Unless the center is not covered. There's no dust cover on it. Okay. It has a field coil right here. And that produces the magnetism for the speaker. And the output transformer is up here. Nice looking, nice looking unit actually, the way it's been done. Wires are a little stiff. All right, not too bad. Not that, actually, you know what? They're not really stiff. Crack in that one. I don't want to flex these too much. And then it's held by these uh, rubber grommets, which are, uh, yeah, they're cracking. They've gone stiff. Uh, this one's squashed away entirely. Okay, so I gotta get this plugged in here. Um, wonder if this is gonna be all about the string and the, and the tuning. should go pretty good. There we go. done properly. That's good. Okay, speakers in. Uh, no antenna connected. Magic eye just sitting on top. on, volume is down, or volume is down, one of these two, probably this one. Band is set to broadcast. Tuning still bizarre. Dim lights did not show up at all. I can see the filaments heating up on the tubes. Running around 100 volt volts of AC supply. Magic eyes coming on a little bit. This one's volume. This must be tone. Yeah. Now let's go tuning a little bit. Yeah. Certainly is receiving. Over that little range. <laughs> Let's see if I put an antenna on, if there's anything there to be 
picked up. This sure seems like a short wave to me. Yeah, I got this color thing backwards here or something. That sure looks like the short wave just coming on. That sounds like short wave. Magic Eye is operating. Oh, there we go. Look at that. I pushed through that stop spot. Huh. Okay, let's shut it off for a second here and figure out what's going on with this tuning. Because uh, somehow I just tuned it past the sticky spot. <clears throat> You know, just it just strikes me as if it's never been tuned past those ranges, and there's just some kind of lubrication issue going on. So I turn it just a little harder, it goes past, and I come back. It's loose. Oh, that locking deal seems to be sliding. Now it's locking here. You know what this is? I think this is a fine tuning system. Yeah. So you, you tune quickly to where you want. It's heavier tuning. And then you have fine tuning there. I've never seen a radio like that. Yeah, I think if we look at the control, we kind of see that that's how it's working. Okay, so the problem is not a problem. Hey, fix that. <laughs> Quick repair. Very nice. Another another uh, very cool way of introducing fine tuning, especially when you have a band that goes all the way from six megahertz to fifteen. When you're up here, a tiny movement of that pointer is actually sweeping a large amount of the band. It makes tuning very difficult, so... Hey, way to go Northern Electric. So I should turn it back on and sort out... There we go. And we'll sort out which band is really which. So I think I have it on the broadcast band. And she'll be picking stuff up in here.
They previously misinformed on purpose early humanity that they were angels, cherubim, or gods. Raelians believe that messengers or prophets include Buddha, Jesus, and others who informed humans of each era. The founder of Raelianism, members claim, received the final message of the Elohim and that its purpose is to inform the world about Elohim and that if humans become aware and peaceful enough, they wish to be welcomed by them. So those are the ones that are driving this thing, and you might dismiss them as nuts, but they've been around a long time, so they're, they're well, they, they might be a little bit on the... I might just tune them out. Don Milton Finch and delays because of that sinkhole Eglinton East of okay. No question, Heads up this is trail. AM. Changes to the Highway Traffic Act means slowing down and moving over... That's a guy working nicely. ...with flashing amber light. Details at headsuponterio.ca. I'm Daryl Fraser with AM640 Chopper Traffic. It's the trade-in, trade-up summer clearance event at your local Dodge retailer. Now get a Dodge Grand Caravan. Click, run out and buy a car. So, so that's great. Looking quite well. Yeah, very well. Okay, we'll switch over to short wave. Up close to 15 megahertz. And with the fine-tuning system they've got here, you've got to kind of rough-tune to a spot and then fine-tune, or rough-tune to the next one, fine-tune back. Just hoping to get WWV here. Seems to be a heterodyne tone with every signal that the radio picks up. code a little too fast for me I don't think we're going to pick up anything lower. We're down, down around 9 now. I don't think we're going to get anything lower. Really, it should be up here around 12. It's got some cities marked on the dial here. How about Daventry? I've never heard of Daventry. Does that even exist? Berlin, Rome, 
Schenectady. Schenectady. Really? Schenectady? There's Daventry again. Berlin. Havana. Toronto. This has Toronto marked on it. I've never... I've never seen a radio with Toronto marked on it. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Because, uh... Wow. So this was probably built locally. Havana, Mexico. Cincinnati. Berlin. Interesting. I, I just love these, uh... When they put the names of the different uh, cities in the light on there. Rome. I'll have to look up Daventry, though. I mean, I'm sure that's somewhere in England. Why would they pick that? Right to the top here. sure why all those heterodyne tones are coming through. Tune past and back with the fine. Yeah. Hmm. Commercial shortwave station. Trying to turn it off with the wrong control. Well, I don't know what to think. Um, it's working fairly well. Um, you know, where's, where can I bring in some improvement here? So I can start with checking a few things. Uh, check the output tube and its biasing. Um, doesn't seem like there's a lot else. I'd love to know why radios produce those heterodynes when you tune things in. I've come across this quite a few times. It's never ever been clear to me exactly where they're coming from. I mean, obviously I can check the alignment on this too, check the band uh, dial accuracy. But as a radio, it's working quite well. Great. <laughs>